Oh. Uh oh. Oh. High speed chase, dang. Oh my god. <laughs> What's going on, guys? It's Brandon or Tesla Flex, and behind me I have a Tesla Cybertruck. But it's not just any cyber truck, it's a cyber beast. And this is actually out of specs, brand new cyber truck. They just took delivery of it yesterday. It's a very early VIN, and I'm really happy to try to show you guys how cool this truck is. Before we get started, I wanna take a moment to thank the sponsor of this video, Magback. Magback makes the rim case, which is essentially a case for your Tesla's rim. And the best part is it covers up existing damage that you already have, and it protects against damage that you might get by hitting a curb. But more on that later in this video. Starting with the outside, we have a stainless steel exterior. It looks pretty good, but it does get dirty pretty easily. And you can see from the few hundred miles we've already driven already, there's bugs all over the place. And then if you come to the other side, you can also see there's a ton of fingerprints. I mean, there's fingerprints all across here. You can see the liquid, all the drops and everything. But especially right here, because the way you open the door and then close the door, you kind of press right here, which gets fingerprints stuck all around here. I mean, you can see fingerprints right here. It's just everywhere. It doesn't look great, but I mean, it doesn't have to worry about scratches on paint and the doors are pretty solid as well. So this is the Foundation Series. It's a $20,000 markup over the existing one that will be available next year. So this comes with the 35 inch all-terrain tires. This does not come with the wheel covers right now because Tesla is having some issues with it damaging the area on the tire. So they just deliver them without, but they're working on the new design right now. So that should be available very shortly. Of course, we have the massive windshield wiper. It's about 48 inches long, probably one of the biggest ones on any passenger vehicle, massive. And then coming around the back, we have the power tonneau cover. And this is probably one of the best I've ever seen on any car. I know the Rivian R1T was one of the first to have it, but this just works really well and it's really solid. You can actually stand right on top of this. It supports up to 300 pounds. And then of course we have the bed right here with a soft open. And then if you open this up, you actually have even more storage in here. And the cool thing is that if you look deeper inside, there's a little plug in here and it's actually the shape of a cyber truck on top. And you can fill this with ice, use it as a cooler and then drain it pretty easily. Another cool thing about this tailgate is you can close it with one or two fingers. You just bring it right up to about here and it closes the rest of the way for you. And then on the back, since this is a cyber beast, it has a three headed dog Cerberus, which I think is really cool. Uh, it's laser etched right inside. And then of course, another foundation series badge right here. And these tires are actually specially made for the Cybertruck. They're from Goodyear. Kind of a little bit of collaboration between Tesla and them, mainly for the Foundation Series, just to kind of give it a more aggressive look. But these do not actually give the car that great of range. So this is rated for, I think, 308 miles of range. The all-wheel drive is like 320, but real real highway speed, it's about like 250. So not that great, but I mean, over time, I'm sure the Cybertruck will improve. And this one, there actually does not come with wheel covers. All Cybertrucks being delivered at this moment around March do not come with wheel covers because they had some issues with this area on the tire being all scuffed up and like basically getting rubbed against by the wheel cover, which was damaging the tires. So they're just delivering them without it for now, but the new design is coming very soon. And then of course, no engine. So there's a front trunk and it's powered, the very first powered front trunk of any Tesla. And I really hope that this continues. And then we have a spec sheet. So right here we have, it's a Cybertruck Beast. So what you get is base autopilot included, the light bar, which is included, but I don't see any light bar on the Cybertruck. Then we have full self-driving, which also not on the Cybertruck yet, not even autopilot yet. And then the, the 99,990 for the Cyber Beast Foundation Series. And then another $20,000 right on on top for the foundation series coming to around $121,000 plus tax. So, I mean, if you're okay paying that price right now, go for it. But in a year, it's gonna be worth about 30,000 less, maybe 40,000 less than it is now. And to close the front trunk, here's a little button right here. You can just press this and it will close it for you. And it has a nice little soft close mechanism. Very cool. And there's also a front bumper camera, the first of any Tesla. The refreshed Model 3 it was supposed to have it at launch. We don't know what happened, it's not there. It should be there hopefully soon. The Model S and Model X are about to get a little refresh with the front bumper camera, ambient interior lighting, all that cool stuff. But let's get inside the Cybertruck. I'm gonna show you some more cool features about it. All right, so we are inside the Cybertruck right now and let's start with maybe just the door thud. It's very solid now, we can hear this. Very solid, that little swishing you heard was just a water bottle. And right here is something called a squircle. So this Cybertruck is steered by a wire. So I'm in park right now, but if I to move this and you look outside, absolutely nothing is moving when I turn this. And it does get a lot stiffer when it's in park, of course. And then if I put my phone on the brake and move this, you can actually see it turns and it's really responsive. And if you look at the rear tires, the Cybertruck has rear wheel steering, which turns the tires three degrees each way. 
there should be a software update or maybe just a new part coming that has up to 10 degrees of rear wheel steering. But of course, we don't know when that's gonna happen. It's Tesla. And then we have a very responsive 18 and a half inch display right here. You can pretty much see everything. And right here, you can also see all the settings. So because it's a cyber beast, you have the dynamics, you have a beast mode right here. So you can actually do a beast launch, which is really cool. And then we have our center console right here with plenty of storage. And if you look inside, we have a USB-C that's 65 watts, and then there's actually a power outlet right here, and I think it's 120 volts, so that's one of four in the Cybertruck. And of course, we have two wireless chargers right here, and for anyone wondering, this is an iPhone 14 Pro Max. I can set this down right here, and it'll start charging. And on my Model 3 or my Model Y, it does not do that, so it's really nice that these are, they're probably the same as the Model S and Model X, just reshaped a little bit but it, it works really well fits really well so that's good that at least it's pretty usable but honestly the wireless chargers just aren't that great they're more of a, a phone heater than anything else the glove box is also a little bit different because if you press right here it's a drawer instead of actually you know popping out and if you look a little bit deeper in here we have the new usb drive so this is actually different than the one that the model 3 and y get so still 128 gigabytes but it's not as like I guess triangular, it's a little bit different shape. It's stainless steel, it looks like it, it matches it pretty well. And the front seats are also cooled. So you tap right here, you can either heat it or cool it. And it's honestly pretty good for what it is. And the back seats, unfortunately, are not cool, but they're still perforated. But let's go grab back seats real quick to just kind of show you what we have back there. All right, so in the back seats, we have three seats. They're very comfortable. I'm six foot tall and I can sit in here pretty comfortably. I mean, even the other day, Alyssa was in here and she had the seat all the way back and my knees weren't even touching the seat. I just, you know, it fit really well. So we have a little rear display here. All Teslas will have this. Right now the Model S, X, 3, and Cybertruck have a rear display. They all operate the same. You can control the fan speed, you can control the seats. You can even move this front seat up and back as long as there's no one in the passenger seat and the car is not in drive. So if the car is in drive and there's no one in the passenger seat, you can actually move it. But if not, then you can't move it at all. It just kind of grays everything out. You can also control the music in here, of course. And then this is only a dual zone climate control. So you have it just two in the front and that just kind of goes to the back. But you do have diff three different fan speeds, which is nice. The Model 3 only has two, the refresh Model 3. You can also watch Netflix, YouTube, Hulu, or Twitch. And in a future update, of course, because Cybertruck is a little bit behind in software, you can actually play video games in the back and connect Bluetooth headsets and everything as well for kids and everything. And then we have the seat pockets right here. These are pretty much the same as what the Model 3 or like the last generation Model 3 or the current Model Y have. Model S and X don't even have seat pockets, but this is like, it's pretty usable. I mean, you could fit some things in there. It's just pretty much the same as a regular seat pocket, but you can also do something really cool with these seats. So you can pull a little string. If you pull right there, you can also, you pull this, you can lift the seats up and then you have a lot more space. You can literally just walk through the car. Like it's pretty easy just to climb through. And if you want to put the seat down, you can also just Pull this real quick and let go and it just pops right down. So it's really nice, really easy to use. And then of course, I guess my biggest gripe with these doors are the buttons. These, these window buttons are so big. I sit down, my elbow hits it and the window just rolls down all the time. Another little addition to the foundation series is the $45 model opener that fits right on the C rails. So you don't wanna spend $45 and you can just get a foundation series, pay an extra $20,000 and you know, you got yourself a deal right there. This is a steal. All right guys, before we get going on the drive, I wanna take a moment to talk about the sponsor of this video, Magback. Magback makes the rim case, which is essentially a case for your Tesla's rims. Magback offers the rim case for the Model 3 21 inch performance wheels and for the 20 inch and 21 inch wheels on the Model Y. It's very easy to set up and it's a great DIY solution for protecting your Tesla's rims. And of course, they're very easy to install. And if you do damage one, you don't have to buy a whole new set of four. You can actually just replace one piece. It pops off really easily. If you wanna protect your Tesla's wheels, the rim case is a great DIY project because they're very easy to put on. It takes just about 20 or 30 minutes and it comes with these little protective covers for the edge of the rim. And then you also get the full set of 11 pieces. These just go right around the wheel. And if you look closely, you can see that there is a little bit of a ridge right here and right here. So it sticks on the wheel, does not fly off as long as you use the adhesive. So it's really well designed. And if you do happen to damage it or curve a rim with the rim case on, it's really easy to replace. You just pop the piece off and then you put the new piece on. It looks like nothing ever happened and you don't have to buy a whole new set. You can just buy one box and you can actually use that for any other curb rash across the wheels because they're all the same size. Make sure to check out Magback in the description below and don't forget to use code TESLAFLEX15 to save 15% on your order. Yeah, so uh, one thing about the Cybertruck is that wherever you are, it attracts everyone and everyone just loves to see it. So 
I mean, this guy just pulled up in his Corvette to come take some pictures. And, you know, we had a guy with a Hummer EV come up and cost some pictures too and was talking about it to us. And, you know, everyone just loves it. But because this is a Cyber Beast, it actually doesn't have the regular vinyl, vinyl top part that the um, all wheel drive has. It has a, a suede, some people say Alcantara, a uh, little top right here, which is really nice. Also, we have a very, very, very long dashboard. I can, I can, there we go. This, I'm like fully extended trying to reach the very front of the windshield. It's, this is the largest windshield of any passenger vehicle. And with that, we have the largest windshield wiper. As you see, it's one and it actually is really powerful. I was pretty, I really didn't believe it would be that good when I first saw it in videos and stuff. But honestly, it's, it's good. It gets everything. And when it's actually raining and you're driving, the wiper actually stays down. That way the rain doesn't keep flying up. So when it's not being used and, you know, it's done, it stays up. But this way it kind of goes down. It, this way is just more for aerodynamics. That way it's not getting all this air wind resistance on it. Then of course we have the screen. You can control everything on here. So it's very responsive. I really like this. Very detailed too. So I can actually open my door over here. And if you look right in there, you can see a Cybertruck on the screen. And then it shows pretty much everything inside the car as well, which is just like pretty impressive. I mean, they can do this, but they can't add full self-driving or autopilot at launch. It's interesting. But like I said, it's steer by wire. All the controls are on here. No more stocks, just like the Model S, X, and 3, and eventually Model Y. So turn signals are on the steering wheel as well, but now they're actually physical clicky buttons instead of the actually haptics. So no more haptics. Even the door buttons are physical clicking buttons now. Yeah, it seems Tesla kind of learned that they, no, the haptic buttons are cool. And it was like kind of a thing It's like, oh, it's the future. But at the same time for usability, it's just not that great. And the same thing with the center horn. So there used to be on the Model S and Model X, a horn button, and it just wasn't that great. Like you would want to go honks, but you couldn't. It just literally didn't work. But we actually have a center horn right here. So if I press this down, it just honks just like normal, which is great. And we can also do voice commands from here. You can talk to it and do everything you need. And then there's a multifunctional button. Um, there's a little label on the side of the steering wheel. People think that's a button. Not a button, it's just a label. This has just always been here. That's how it's always been. This is the same, this is how you can enable autopilot and control everything, or I guess cruise control right now. Actually, so this is where the horn button used to be, but if I press this, it pulls up the cameras. And like I said, there's even a front camera, and if I press right here, I can clean the front camera. Unfortunately, the rear camera, which is also the view when you're driving, because the tonneau cover, when it's down, you literally can't see out the back. Uh, if that gets dirty, then you have to go wipe it off with your thumb, and just it's just kind of dirty, so. I would like to see maybe in the future ones, them having a little cleaner for the rear camera too, but we'll get there. I mean, they took four years to deliver the truck and they're missing a lot of things. They under delivered on a few things, but overall I'm really impressed with the truck. And this is probably one of the best built ones I've seen. And for being a cyber beast and $120,000, I would say it's worth it just for how cool it is. Not that usable on like super long road trips. It can still do it, but it just takes longer to charge. It doesn't get as good range. If you're going on a road trip, I would recommend a Model Y or Model 3 or maybe a Model X. Or I guess any of the other cars that all supercharge fast. This one is just more like a, it's a cool car right now. It'll get better over time, just like everything else. Like the Model S and Model X at launch, they weren't that great. I mean, they, they had good supercharging, but like until 2018, the most you could supercharge on a Model S or X was like 120 kilowatts. And it just, it was rough. But, you know, since then we can get up to like 260 on a Model S and Model X. And I'm sure once they uncap V3 chargers, I'm sh it's going to be a lot more than that. Maybe up to 280 at that point. So things will improve. And that's just how Tesla works. They like to deliver as quickly as possible, even if they're missing things. Like I said, there is, we have full self-driving on here. So we can see full self-driving computer, full self-driving capability, and premium connectivity is, is included because it's a foundation series. But I got an autopilot screen. This is all we got. Traffic aware cruise control, that's it. I mean, there's a little tap for full self-driving beta, but that's it. And it, for some reason you actually can do traffic line stop sign control because I guess that's just based on the lights. It doesn't need any lane centering, but still it, it'd be nice if they could actually deliver these cyber trucks with autopilot at least. I understand the full self-driving aspect because I mean, a full self-driving cyber truck just does not sound that safe to me right now with how big they are. And I guess the way they just turn all that stuff that's messing with it. And then if we go through right here, we have an accent light. It's kind of hard to see during the day, but we have a bunch of different colors. And actually, it, wow, these saved from my profile from the last Cybertruck, which is pretty cool. So I can actually change between, these are my custom colors. I got blue, yellow, pink, 
and then we have the pre-built uh, built-in colors we got white which is just like a nice little white accent blue purple pink red orange and green so a lot of cool things uh, accent lights are coming to the model s and model x very soon if not already in the cars at this point if you're watching the video the refresh model 3 has it already and the model y refresh is obviously going to have it as two so i mean it's just one more thing that they're trying to add to the cars to at least make it more competitive as more companies start to put out electric cars with you know actual good features tesla's been lacking on features for a few years and now it's nice to see they're actually putting more focus on you know the little features that people don't seem to care about that much and then here we have the display settings uh, there's actually a special setting, it's called Cybertruck logo. So every time you open the door, so when you open up the door, any of the doors, the first thing you see on the main display is a Cybertruck thing, only exclusive to Cybertruck, obviously. And I mean, it's just a little thing, really cool little add-on, but you know, not super necessary. We also have the same trip planner, the efficiency, I'm gonna be honest, it's not, that's almost like two miles per kilowatt hour. So it's not great, but also we have not been driving this very soft. It's been a lot of launches, a lot of fast driving. so. This is just higher. I'd say it's going to be closer to 350, 400 on average. And then same navigation stuff. Um, I mean, this is my profile, so it's pretty much the same as my Model Y at home. Then we have Sentry Mode, and because it has Sentry Mode, instead of the little, uh, like the red eye right there, or like the thing that says you're recording, it's a Cyber Owl. And I'll actually include a clip kind of showing what that looks like in this video. Then we have our service menu and all the same settings, car wash mode, all that stuff. Our software we're currently on version 2024.2.8 so that's the most recent version they're still missing a lot of features but you can see in the release notes they're adding stuff like crazy so they they started last year like they didn't even have most of these steering improvements any of this like so they're they're adding everything it's like a brand new car so they have to slowly add things and i've also added a bunch of new games because it's a tesla so of course it needs to have all of these cool little features we have our toy box which includes boombox, the light shows, the missions testing mode, which is just basically fart mode. We have tracks, romance mode, a sketch pad, Mars mode, which is honestly more fit for the Cybertruck than anything else because it kind of turns the background on the screen to be like orangish. And then if you open the map up, it's just the same as any other Tesla where it kind of shows like that you're on Mars. And that's actually pretty good for if you're making videos and don't want to expose your location. And you can also control the rear display from the front seats, which I really, I really like that. It's pretty cool. So I can actually look at the rear screen I can actually move this around and you can see on the screen it's moving I can switch between things I can even move the seat up from here which is funny and then obviously change the music and you know control it so if there's like little kids and they don't know how to use it you can just pull it up and touch the stuff for them and oh one more thing you can lock the rear display so if you do have little kids and you don't want them touching everything or messing with their music you can lock it and you can't even touch it it's, it's useless so you click unlock and then back to normal so works really well you can control everything right here so this will be in every Tesla. It's our only Tesla is not in that at this point. It's the Model Y, and that's coming out next year. Then we have, of course, like the same settings, like the theater and the browser. All these things are just pretty much the exact same as every other Tesla. I really like that. It's a lot of continuity across their vehicles. That way, you're not getting in one car that has different features. My profile is actually linked. So I have this, my uh, app set up. So it's I have a key for this, and I have it in my app and I can pretty much see everything. If I go into my Tesla app right now, but setting up the phone key is really easy. That took like five seconds. I can pair it like that. And then I can also go right here and I can see all the controls. So you can pretty much do everything you need. You can open the tonneau cover, close the tonneau cover, the front trunk, you can lock and unlock it. You can open the charge port. You can actually turn on the outlets in the back. And then you can of course honk, start the car, close any windows, open any windows, dent them. Everything you can do from the regular Tesla app for your other vehicles. And then we also have no upgrades available. So when you go to upgrades on the Cybertruck, because it's foundation series, you have every single possible software thing built in. So the only thing you can really do is buy Cybertruck accessories through the app. But I mean, works just the same. Uh, some of the controls are a little bit different too. So we have obviously the tailgate that pops the tailgate down. You can turn the power outlets on with the press of a button. Um, you can turn on and off sentry mode, the tonneau cover, you can defrost everything. So it's just really nice that everything works really well. And I, it looks really cool in the app. I mean, compared to like, we got um, Plattington, Out of Spec Plaid, and then my Model Y right here. It's the exact same. I go in here, I have pretty much the same controls. So really nice that it just works. It doesn't have to be a whole different thing. It feels like a Tesla, it drives like a Tesla, but it looks like a refrigerator and it's crazy. All right, so now we can go on our first drive. And the first thing you do, because this has no stocks, you put your seatbelt on just like any car and then press your foot on the brake to activate drive. 
and then you just press your foot on the accelerator to kind of get moving. And because it's auto shift, it knows that I'm going forward. But for example, if I actually uh, were to pull into this spot, this, this golf cart parking spot, and I went into park, you can see that when I want to go into reverse, it actually knows to activate reverse. I put my foot on the brake, and then I put my foot on the accelerator, and I can back up. It doesn't work 100% of the time, but obviously you're going to check it and make sure. But, you know, I, I'd say in my experience of using auto shift for two, two and a half years, it's worked pretty well. So, I mean, I'm a fan of it. Some people aren't. Um, the squircle, I'm not super fond of this little top part, even though I grab it a lot. It just feels, it feels kind of flimsy. Um, I would honestly prefer a yoke in the Cybertruck. Some people might agree. Kyle would hang me <laughs> if I said I like that. But, um, yeah, so we're going to go get driving around. Um, maybe I can do a launch with this. We're at 78%, which is approximately 234 miles. So not amazing. You can see right here, there's these lines on the screen. So if you want to kind of see around stuff, you can kind of see like, if I want to get right around this curb, I can actually see like, if I'm like right here, it's going to say, I'm going to hit the grass right there. So I can actually just follow the line and it will go around the curb. It just, it's really helps with like tight corners and stuff. Cause this is a huge truck, but also a steer by wire, which means it's a little bit different. Steer by wire combined with the rear wheel steering it just allows for the rear wheels to turn. And you can actually see on the camera right there, when I turn the wheels, they face the opposite direction. And I'd say first impressions, this feels really good to drive. Um, I keep grabbing the top, but it feels like driving a really big Model Y, to be honest, which is no problem with that. It shouldn't have to feel like a really heavy duty truck to drive. I, I honestly prefer, I prefer that it's like a nicer, easier ride than other cars and other trucks. I was driving the Silverado EV and F-150 Lightning and those just, they felt huge. They were just massive. And this, it just feels, it's about the same size, a little bit smaller, but it just feels like you're driving a completely different vehicle. So right here, I mean, I can turn on cruise control, but that's about it. Um, no autopilot, unfortunately, but that's coming over a soft rev date, typical Tesla fashion. But if I get over here, I can actually, this is 35 now, so I can get up to 35 and because there's no rear view, there is a rear view beer, but it's pretty useless because when the tonneau cover is closed, you can't even see out the back. So they give you this tiny little uh, camera view, but you can always move it right here if you want a bigger view. I kind of prefer over here just because I like I use, I look at the speed right here and I look at the camera right there and you get used to it pretty quickly. There's a lot of hate around it and like people wondering like why they couldn't just put a camera up here. That just makes too much sense. Like <laughs> why would Tesla put a, can uh, a little screen up here? That's too easy. They want to make it a little bit more complicated for everyone, but you get used to this pretty quickly. It rides really smoothly. I think I'm in just regular mode. I'm in a custom mode actually. Yeah, I have it set to sport acceleration with relaxed ride and handling with a higher ride height. But if I go into beast mode, it actually puts it down to focus, lowers the suspension on it, and then obviously, you know, has beast mode. So let's get on the highway so I can try to do like maybe a little launch and just drive it around on the highway at highway speeds. All right, so we're turning onto the highway right now and I can actually just do a quick little launch, not the full Cyber Beast launch, so I'm gonna save that for Kyle, but we get down to basically nothing and then boom, zero to 60 and 2.6 seconds. Very, it is insanely quick. It really pulls you back. It's, it's actually insane and I mean, it's, it's lower slightly than a Model X Plaid that's two and a half seconds, but you know, no one's really knowing and just the speed and power of a huge, like set, almost 7,000 pound pickup truck for 2.6 seconds, it's crazy. Yeah, we can go on this highway real quick. Here we go, we can do another acceleration and the motor sound, it's, it just sounds amazing. And it, that's that's all like, it's all real, not fake at all. You know, so no speaker noise, it just, that's just the motor. So kind of cool that they added this in on the Cybertruck, I'm sure most Model 3 and Y owners wouldn't really care that much about having their motors and fake sound. They might think it's like broken or something. But the turn signals, uh, these have auto canceling turn signals. So if I get over one lane, you can see it just turns off automatically, which is really cool. Uh, all Teslas have this, even with the stocks, but it's a lot more useful, I would say, with the stockless design, just because it takes away some of that like fatigue from having to disable. It's like very little difference, but you can enable cruise control and Still have to hold on to the squircle, but you know, it does a pretty good job and it's really smooth. We're in the actually beast mode. So if I go into a different mode, I can go into maybe comfort mode. It's gonna start feeling a lot smoother. It's gonna be in chill acceleration, relaxed handling, and then a higher ride height, which makes it a lot smoother for driving around. And I, can, I already feel a difference. 
it feels a lot smoother on the road right now. The I guess one tiny complaint I have about the Cybertruck is that it's kind of loud in the front. And that's because everything is right here, right in front of me. That's also why the dashboard is so long. So I'm sure in the future iterations of the Cybertruck, it will get quieter, just like the Model 3 and Y and S and X have all gotten quieter over time. This is a first generation product, so you don't want to have your expectations too high. And I think Tesla made a small mistake by setting everyone's expectations too high in 2019. All right, so we're exiting the highway and one thing I like about the Cybertruck is that it has a lot heavier regens. If I let off, it will slow down a lot more. Not as much as the Silverado EV, as I learned, because you can really put that up. But this is like pretty smooth. You don't even need to use the brake pedal that often. So let's uh, get somewhere where I can kind of show. There's a blind spot indicator right here on either side. It's a tiny red dot. You know, they could have done a little bit better, making it like maybe, you know, a car shape or just a little bit more like obvious. And then I'm going around this curve and you can kind of see barely having to turn it. It's barely, I can drive with one hand. It's really nice to drive around with. So let's get back on the highway. The all wheel drive version, I think is zero to 60 in 4.1 seconds. This is 2.6. So a second and a half for $20,000. Is that worth it? I would say if you have the money for sure, if you just want a cyber truck and I mean, if you're already paying a hundred thousand dollars, like it's $20,000 more. Some people that obviously don't really want all the power and maybe the insurance will cost more with the Cyber Beast, but I'd say Cyber Beast is definitely worth it. It's, it takes a lot longer to get though. I think if you have it configured, you can't really get it until like late this year, unless you use the accelerated delivery option that pops up in the referral shop from time to time. Once this has autopilot, this is gonna be a really great like car just for comfortable trips and you're just high up. You can see everything around you. You can see uh, this little window over here that kind of see I guess the lane lines and stuff the mirrors they're I would say they, they could they don't need to have a triangle shape I think they were just trying to keep it with it but it's just like at the bottom part it's a little small so it's kind of hard to see some things but I guess that's why you can just pop these up and you know eventually they don't want to even have mirrors but, so I guess maybe you can even take these off and just put a little cover over the hole that's right there all right so coming up to this truck up here there's actually the blind spot indicator it should be on the little the tweeter speaker right there so when i get right next to this thing it will tell me that there's something here and if i actually turn my signal on it blinks to kind of show like hey don't don't do that and then we have these sun visors up here um they they're similar to the model x so they actually come out this way instead of going in inwards and they're stored just right up here so you can pop these in place and then you can also fold this down and there's a tiny little mirror it's, it's a little small but i'd say it's about the same as the model x and then you can fold that and pops right in there. Same little magnetizing latch right here to kind of hold it in place, which is really nice. I mean, they, they do that with all their cars, but this is the closest to the Model X. All right, so we're just getting off the highway. We're gonna head back to the park area and I'll get my final thoughts on this. But, oh, oh, <laughs> uh oh, high speed chase, dang. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, we're going to uh, get back. I'll get my final thoughts. Oh, another one. Just There's three of them chasing him now. Jeez. Crazy things happening at the great outdoors. <laughs> yeah, we'll get back. I'll get my final thoughts on the Cybertruck, and then uh, we'll wrap up the video. To go into park, you don't have to press this. You can actually press this to, and hold it to go into park, or just unbuckle your seatbelt, and it throws you in park. I like that option a lot more. It's just a lot easier to kind of get in and out of the car and of course I can just pop this open and get right out. All right guys, so that's just about it for this video, but I just wanna get my final thoughts about the Cyber Beast. I gotta say, I'm really impressed with it and I drove all wheel drive and it was, it was cool. It was a nice Cyber Truck, but of course it can only get better. But the Cyber Beast is really cool for what you get. It's $120,000, so if you can swing that, I would definitely do it. Only downsides I would say about the Cyber Truck right now is that it has slower charging and a big battery, but not that good of range. It has a 120 kilowatt hour battery, but only gets 320 or 340 miles of range on the regular one, or 320 or 318 on the all wheel drive, like 308 on the Cyber Beast. I'm kind of curious to see what Kyle can get on his channel with the range test doing this with the wheel covers on. I guess another downside is that there's no wheel covers right now, but all the owners that are taking delivery will get the wheel covers sent to them eventually when they redesign them. Do I think it's worth spending $120,000 on a tri motor Cyber Beast? No. For me, I would say no just because I could get three Model Ys for the price of this one Cyber Beast. But of course, if you're looking for a pickup truck that is capable, this is pretty capable. Um, it's first generation, so it will improve over time. And I'm also excited to see how it improves. And 
Don't worry, I'll have plenty of short form content coming with the Cyber Beast and more long form videos as well. So guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and let me know down in the comments what your favorite Cybertruck feature is. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you in the next one.